You need to be able to categorize your exercises in order to create an efficient program. And the equation that underlines all training is force equals mass times acceleration. Everything you do in the gym is some combination of mass times acceleration. The force that you are producing to overcome the inertia of the weight that you are moving will be dependent on the mass and the acceleration. And by the end of this video, you should be able to go through your workout program with a marker and highlight where perhaps you are overdoing some exercises and where you can implement others, and I'll explain how. So we can categorize our exercises in terms of mass and acceleration, and we have a continuum. And at the beginning of this continuum is acceleration dominant exercises, and these are ballistic exercises, speed exercises, all the way through the continuum with the moderate mass and acceleration where it's almost level, all the way to the extreme of the continuum where it's heavily mass dominated with your rack pulls, your, your heavy one rep max deadlifts, those are mass dominant all the way to the beginning with acceleration dominant exercises, which may be your box jumps, your plyometrics, your speed work. And in the, in the middle, we have this sort of strength speed exercise category, which is your Olympic lifting, where you have a moderate weight and acceleration. And also, just beyond that, we have the controlled rep category, where, which is most likely what you are doing. The controlled repetition, bodybuilding style, bench pressing, uh, dumbbell, uh, shoulder press, these types of exercises. And these may be dominant within your workout program. And so what I would say is that most likely, within your muscle building workout program, you have a large amount of controlled repetition exercises, where you're using uh, a fairly heavier mass than acceleration, your eight rep bench press, for example. You may also be doing uh, maximal lifts above 85% of your one rep max, uh, three to five rep deadlifts, bench, uh, squat. So it's gonna be a mixture of those two that are perhaps dominant within your workout programs. But it's also important that you have speed exercises and also supramaximal heavy exercises somewhere within your macro cycle. And where I like to put these is at the beginning of your training, in the warm-up if you like. And so what I would recommend is that in your warm-up, you want to overload your nervous system. You want to activate the nervous system. Get those motor units online in preparation for your controlled rep work. And these speed exercises can be very simple. You want to match it to the movement that you are doing that day. It, you may do an upper body workout, a back workout, a chest workout. If you are training chest that day, let's say you're using a chest training split, then putting some plyometric push-ups in your warm-up is a speed, a ballistic exercise which will overload that nervous system and prepare it for what you are doing in that session. Another example of this is the speed bench. Now you can go Louis Simmons style here and put some foam under your shirt and work a speed bench where you're focusing on acceleration. This is very speed dominant, acceleration dominant. You're focusing on the speed, not the mass. So you're using a light to moderate weight and you are training for performance. You don't want to push it to the point of where you're tired. You want to push where you're explosive, where you, are, where you stop becoming explosive, that's where you stop with your reps. And interestingly enough, in terms of activating that nervous system, in your warm-up, at the start of your sessions, you can use speed exercises, ballistic exercises, plyometrics, medicine ball throws, speed benches. But you can also go to right at the opposite end of the spectrum and take your supramaximal, heavy, heavy mass-weighted exercises and put them in your warm-up because they also heavily overload your nervous system. These would be your rack pulls, your partial rep squats, partial rep deadlifts. It can, it, using an extreme mass, heavy, heavy mass with a smaller range of motion, there's virtually no acceleration, but what you're doing by 
using a large mass with a smaller range of motion is activating those hard to reach type 2 muscle fibers and recruiting more motor units. And also, these speed exercises have the ability to recruit large motor units, so you can, you can change it up. Preparing your training program is an art form, so you can mix up what you're doing in your warm-ups. You can use speed exercises one day, you can use supramaximal rack pulls the next day, but what you are looking to do is overload that nervous system in preparation for your core work, where you're going to do your, your 8 to 10 reps, controlled movements, bench press, deadlifts, uh, hammer curls, whatever it may be and so what I want you to do is look at your training program and look at the variation in categories you have do you have any speed exercises in your training do you have any rack pulls in your training if not perhaps you have let's take a back day for example let's say you train back and you're doing a, a back row you're doing a lap pull down you're doing a deadlift. These exercises are where you're using a controlled mass and a, a, a light acceleration. So perhaps you can take out the back row. The barbell back row is a very controlled movement, controlled repetition category. And you can substitute that for a penle row where you can put more acceleration into the movement. And so just by doing that, you can change up the workout to try and overcome this homeostasis that the body always wants to do. And by overcoming homeostasis, you can do this through acceleration or mass. You are able to create adaptations. And so my advice to you is make sure you have a, a variety of categories within your training. I believe it's very efficient and effective to have uh, controlled reps, bodybuilding reps, in, in your as the core of your workout, eight to ten reps, building that muscle, controlled movement, slow eccentric, powerful on the concentric, and also using three to five rep compound lifts, which maximal uh, lifts. Those two categories are very effective, but don't ignore the the ballistic exercises, the plyometrics, the plyometric push up, the speed bench. These acceleration dominant exercises and don't ignore the extremely heavy exercises, the rack pulls and the partial reps which you can also put within your workout to stimulate that nervous system. So I hope this video was useful. I'm James Linker, Shredder Sports Science. See you soon.